So, if you ever take the Galapagos cruise, you might be lucky enough to see one pretty remarkable fella. It's called the red lip batfish, and it looks like some sort of bat that overdid its makeup. You can find it at depths from 50 to 300 feet, and you probably won't miss it because it can grow up to 10 inches long. They mostly chill on the seabed, where they shuffle their way along the seafloor on their stubby little fin legs with pretty large feet. Yup, very odd to see a fish walking. But from time to time, they come to the surface to see if there's something interesting up there. You can also find them at the edge of reefs. Red-lipped batfish are not fans of warm waters, so you'll mostly find them in colder ones. It's an angler fish. That's the type of fish that lures its potential prey with a fleshy lobe. Do you see it here on a filament that arises from their snout? These fish usually come with a big head and wide mouth. Uh, no comment. Their tail and bodies are relatively small. The red-lipped batfish has a fleshy growth on its head. That's how it catches smaller animals, such as mollusks, shrimp, and little fish of opportunity. Now, check this bizarre creature lurking in the deep sea. It's called a tripod fish, and you can find it all across the Indian, Pacific, and Atlantic Oceans. Look at their long, bony fins. They can extend up to 3 feet from their underside and tail. Scientists think they pump fluid into these fins when they're standing so they can remain rigid. When they're swimming, their long fins softly float beneath them, which can sometimes look a little bit awkward. I mean, the walking part looks kinda weird too, but cool, you must admit. Tripod fish evolved to sit on their pretty long fins to be taller, because that way it gets into a perfect position to catch fish, tiny prawns, and other small unfortunate yet tasty animals the ocean current brings right into their mouth. It's a perfect mechanism when you think about it. Currents are barely present at the seabed level, so they'd have to work much harder. Hmm. And this fish can't even see the prey coming. It's almost blind because it spends most of its time in a dark habitat. But its long fins feel the vibrations in the muddy sediment little animals that pass nearby make. And these pectoral fins that sit right behind its head are some sort of antenna. It gives them extra information about incoming dinner. Now, you must admit you haven't seen that many grumpy-looking animals like this cusk eel. They do have long fins and long bodies, plus their name says it, but they're not actually eels. The cusk eel family has different members, each with its own specifics. For example, the faceless cusk. Just as its name says, the species mostly don't have a face. Some have eyes that function, while others don't. Some produce weird sounds while looking for a partner, and many of them live in deep waters. Many fish have pelvic fins under their body, but cusk eels took it to the next level. Their pelvic fins move forward through their evolution, which is why you're now looking at long and slender barbells here under their head. And the real eels don't even have pelvic fins. You can see flying fish jumping out of warm ocean waters across the globe. Thanks to the specific shape of their slim body, they can develop a speed of about 37 miles per hour while they're still underwater. When they reach that speed, they just angle upward and break the surface. They rapidly beat their tail while it's still under the surface. They propel themselves with a little help from their friends, I mean, from their big pectoral fins that look like wings. That's how they escape bigger animals that come after them. And there are so many predators out there lurking from the ocean depths and hoping to catch flying fish. For example, tuna, mackerel, swordfish, marlin, and some other bigger fish. The challenge is big, so the flying fish needed to develop a good strategy to escape. But when they're on the surface, they sometimes become a target to birds. Also, they're attracted to light. And fishermen know that, so they use light to catch them. It seems no one wants to leave them alone. Now at first, it looks like you're looking at a small plastic bag. But it's actually a real, but still pretty bizarre, marine animal that can grow up to 6 inches. From a different perspective, you see how it got its name. Thanks to its pink-colored body, 
and probably because it enjoys the muddy seafloor so much. That's all it has in common with pigs. These little fellows are actually a kind of sea cucumber. And you must admit, they're surprisingly adorable with their tube feet on their back, underbelly, and around their mouth. These creatures spend most of their time snuffling through the muddy seafloor. They mostly eat remnants of dead algae or some other tasty bits that have fallen somewhere from the surface. Of course, they can eat bigger stuff, too. For example, an entire whale. Sea pigs are great deep-sea babysitters for juvenile lithodid crabs. Here, you try to pronounce that. Researchers saw these little crabs hiding under and climbing on sea pigs. It was probably a way for the young crabs to stay safe from dangerous predators and a way for sea pigs to kill some time and earn some extra cash. Yeah. Now at first, a sea angel looks like some creative animator decided to create a cartoon with such a heartwarming character. But what you're looking at is a real creature, a small swimming sea slug. Its body is transparent, which gives the creature such a fairy tale look. And check out its graceful flapping wings. It's definitely not something we'd expect from slugs. Given a choice, they'd prefer to stay in cold waters. Snails and slugs usually fall into a category called gastropods. And the members of this group usually have muscular feet. But in the case of sea angels, it developed into appendages that remind of wings. This is what helps them with swimming in open waters. And they don't have shells either. But don't let their sweet, angelic appearance dupe you. These creatures are quite sneaky. They use their tentacles, and this piece called radula, when they want to pull other swimming snails from their shells. And do what? Oh, that? Mm. When I first looked at this creature called giant siphonophore, I didn't think it was scary because it looked like some sort of centipede. And how giant can these be? Well, it seems they can stretch to be 130 feet long. Okay, it doesn't look scary even at a second look, but I still wouldn't like to face it. It's like you're watching some random long rope that's just floating through the ocean depths. Although it looks like some silly string that does nothing, this creature is a collection of pretty functional parts, where each is specialized for something else. Some of its parts are in charge of catching prey, while others digest food. Some parts exist for reproduction, while others direct the action of this entire rope whoops, I mean body by swimming. This animal is bioluminescent, which means it creates its own light. When it bumps against some random object on its way, its stem glows and you can see a bright blue light. Isn't the flapjack octopus really cute? With its stumpy webbed arms, big eyes, and fins that remind of ears on its mantle, really adorable. You'll mostly find the flapjack octopus on the seafloor. It likes to spend most of its time there, since that's where it can relax and lay flat, looking like a pancake. And when it feels it's time to go somewhere, this little creature swims or hovers above the seabed. It flaps its fins and pulses its web of arms, and looks nothing like an octopus, more like pulsating jelly. Well, yes, that's weird. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.